You arrive at your gig. Your USB is prepared and full of bangers. But then you look down. It's a CDJ from 15 years ago. Your hot cues don't load. Your loops are out of time. And you've seen better screens on your nan's TV. You panic and you ruin your set. The thing is, this scenario is way more common than you might think. That's why understanding the differences between every kind of CDJ is essential. Because if you don't, your set will be over before you even press play. Here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to split each CDJ up into three sections so you can understand the differences easily. The screen, what's on it, what you can do with it, and how it's different. The physical buttons and controls available on the deck. And finally, the functions, what the CDJ itself can and can't do. Then I'll cover the tiny quirks that give each CDJ its own annoying personality. We'll start with the newest CDJ, then we'll travel back in time, slowly removing features, hacking off buttons, and using older and older gear. At the time of recording, the CDJ3000 is Pioneer or Alpha Theta's latest and greatest, and is probably the most similar to a laptop and controller setup. But getting too comfortable on this CDJ is one of the fastest ways to get caught out. The first and most obvious thing you'll spot is the big boy 9-inch screen. This makes track browsing a lot easier. You can see more tracks at once, and you can get up to 7 columns of information in Browse View. That's enough to get even a Roman architect excited. It's a nicer column. This all sounds very positive, but having more information can actually make it a lot harder to choose a track. Think about the most important information you use to decide your next track. You can then hide or show columns in the browse view as necessary. I'm a big fan of the free band waveform in Rekordbox. It looks horrible, but it clearly separates the bass, middle, and treble. The CDJ3000 has it too, and you can enable it through the shortcuts menu. But maybe you shouldn't, because if you find yourself in an older CDJ like the ones I've got here, you'll be stuck with either RGB or blue waveforms. And if you don't know how to read those, you might struggle. There's also a few buttons on the CDJ3000 you won't get anywhere else. You can find a new key sync button over on the right hand side. Great. We also have some hardware beat jump buttons, and you can customize the length of the beat jump on the screen. I actually use beat jump all the time at home to set hot cues on the fly, but this is a really bad habit that can be a death sentence if you rely on it. On older CDJs, beat jump isn't even a thing, and sometimes there's not even a grid to set your hot cues in advance. Speaking of hot cues, we get eight of them on the CDJ3000, all with their own color coded buttons. This opens it up for much more creative performing. Well, kind of. Let's come back to that. We've also now got some dedicated search and playlist buttons above the screen to quickly jump into those sections of browse view. This is really handy for dipping in and out of certain playlists or just finding your next track a lot faster. Take advantage of this because you'll never see it again. If the CDJ3000s are connected by a Pro DJ Link, you also get a few nifty new features. The first of these is stacked waveforms like you would get on a controller and laptop setup. To activate it, you just tap on the phase meter at the top of the screen. Touch preview allows you to preview a track from your playlist without actually playing it on the CDJ. All you need to do is hold down your finger on the waveform in browse view. We've then got touch cue, which lets you listen to different parts of the track as it's actually playing. This is really handy for listening in your headphones where you might want to do a transition. This works in a similar way by just holding your finger down on the waveform at the bottom of the screen. It's all pretty nice, but Pro DJ Link actually working is never a given, so always carry a spare ethernet cable. All CDJs have quirks that give them their own personality, and the 3000s is that of an angry, weak old snail. Even though it's got CD in its name, the CDJ3000 doesn't stand for them at all. In fact, it's got rid of its CD and DVD slot altogether, kind of like when your dad starts saying mid to try and fit in with Gen Z. Having easy access to eight hot cues is great and gives you a lot more flexibility, but in my opinion, they're in a really stupid place that makes it too easy to knock the jog wheel while you're playing. They've also got a horrible, plasticky feeling to them that makes me not want to use them at all. If you're like me, you might find yourself having to adapt your DJ style to rely less on hot cues. There's another problem with this CDJ that makes hot cues a bit of a waste of time. This thing is laggy. The hot cues take a long time to activate, meaning you can miss your timing. And this is subjective, but as a whole, I think the unit feels pretty sluggish. Loops also behave a little bit differently on the 3000. It's actually a bit better, but it might catch you out if you're not aware of it. On older CDJs, changing the loop length with quantize off meant the loop snapped back to the start of the loop. This meant if you change the length of your loop, out of time, it would all sound terrible. The CDJ3000 doesn't do that anymore, making it a lot easier to play with loop. Alright, the CDJ3000 has got a lot of features, and some of them are pretty good, but relying on them for your sets is a terrible idea. Because here's the thing, just because the CDJ3000 is the newest model, doesn't mean it's the most common. In fact, it's probably the complete opposite. It's time to hop into our time machine.
Back in 2016, Pioneer probably released the most popular CDJ of all time, the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2, which I have here, and it's still really common in clubs. But despite its popularity, there's still plenty of ways it can mess you up. First of all, we're going to chop two inches off the CDJ 3000 screen. That's almost as much as Never mind. The reduced screen means we lose stacked waveforms, so it's time to get familiar with the phase meter. This is kind of a half hour stacked waveform, but once you know how it works, it's still pretty useful, and it's available in all the CDJs we're covering today. The phase meter is essentially a visualization of beats and bars. Each red line represents a bar, and each smaller line is a beat. If your CDJs are linked together, you'll get two of these stacked on top of each other, and if they line up, your tracks are in time. We also lose the LCD jog display on the 3000s. You can't see your album artwork anymore, I'm sorry. But you still get all the information you need. It'll tell you if you're in vinyl mode or not, and slip mode is now represented by a red circle. You also get a jaunty record box logo where they accidentally filled two letters in white. In our last time hop, a few buttons jump ship. Some have moved around, and some just need a bit more TLC to activate. Choosing a source is now done with dedicated buttons on the left-hand side of the screen, rather on a touch screen like it is on the 3000. Feel free to stroke each one and decide on your favourite. We also lose the dedicated playlist button. This means more hopping in and out of playlists when you're in browse mode, so expect to spend a little bit more time finding a track. Slip mode has moved from the left hand side to under the loop section, and Quantize has gone to visit its friends in the south of France under the source buttons. Unfortunately, we've lost the dedicated 4 8 loop buttons we had on the 3000. To get a 4 beat loop, you press the button once, and to get an 8 beat loop, you hold it down. You can then change the beat lengths on screen as usual, or use the call buttons. But there's good news we still have 8 hot cues, and they're on the left hand side away from the jog wheel. But there's only four buttons. That's because the eight hot cues are split into two banks of four. You can switch between the banks with the two buttons underneath the hot cues. The left hand one gives you A, B, C, D, and the right hand one gives you E, F, G, and H. One thing that might catch you out here is remembering which bank you have activated. It's too easy to trigger the first hot cue button expecting A to play, but you actually get E. The bank buttons do actually have a small light which lights up to show you which side of the hot cues you're using, but it's tiny and easy to forget, so make sure to pay extra attention. But even though we still have eight hot cues available, I actually recommend you only use three and you'll see why soon. The 2000 Nexus 2 doesn't actually lose a lot of functionality from the 3000, but I see a lot of the functions as like a first try, like the Wii U of CDJs. The functions are there, but they don't work quite as well and aren't as useful. One of these is Beat Jump, which you can access next to the phase meter, but you lose the hardware buttons of the 3000 and have to use the screen to jump more than one beat. Compared to the 3000, the Nexus 2 is definitely slower at loading tracks, especially if they've got a lot of metadata. If you like mixing fast, this could cost you valuable seconds. You also lose a few browsing bonuses from the 3000. Waveform preview isn't there. An always visible category navigation on the left-hand side of the screen is gone as well. This means you can expect to spend a lot more time dipping in and out of playlists and categories. We also have the older ball bearing style jog wheel. It's definitely got a bit of a different feel from the one on the 3000. You might prefer it, but it's just something to be aware of and might take a bit of adjustment. Now this CDJ was the first one to use a touch screen. Depending on your viewpoint, this can be a good or a bad thing. When I've been using loops, I often find myself just missing the target on the screen or tapping something else by accident. So it's worth learning the corresponding hardware buttons to do the same function, such as using the call buttons to half or double a loop. To put this video together, I've spent weeks of research reading manuals, watching 13-year-old YouTube videos, and speaking to loads of gigging DJs. But there's a lot of information, way more than I could get just in one video. And what I've noticed is all the information out there is just feature walkthroughs, not what DJs really care about, which is how is this CDJ different? That's why I've created the DJ Booth Battle Pack. It includes everything we're covering here, plus loads of extra stuff to make you confident on any club setup. You can grab the link in the description. It's 2012, London is hosting the Olympics, and the CDJ 2000 Nexus is arriving on the scene. And just like Tech House, it took everything we loved about what came before and made it a bit worse. We've lost more screen in our last time jump. Less vertical height means we can now only see six tracks in browse mode. That's two less than the Nexus 2 where you can see eight. Anyone born after 1995 is gonna be disappointed because we've lost the touch screen. As we'll see in a moment, this causes a lot of issues that you'll have to get used to. Oh, and it's also got stupid font. 
I often color code my hot cues to make them easier to find. For instance, I usually use red for the drop. On here, every hot cue is green, like someone poured a load of peas over the waveform. The phase meter on the Nexus 2 was already a pound shop version of stacked waveforms. Well, on this CDJ, you now get a charity shop version. Four Lego bricks representing the beats in one bar is all you get. If you're as old as me, you might remember T9 predictive typing on your mobile phone. You used to hit all the little numbers and it would try and predict what you're trying to type. If you're playing on the CDJ2000 Nexus, this looks advanced. Searching for tracks is not done with a keyboard, but a stupid tiny little strip of letters at the bottom of the screen. And because it's not a touch screen, you have to select them with the needle search strip underneath. But the needle search strip isn't all bad. I used to have one of these on an old Newmark controller and I loved it. You drag your finger across it and it scans through your track. This is a much nicer tactile way of scanning through your track rather than using a screen. On the 2000 Nexus, the rotary dial has lost some clothing. The tag track and back buttons have floated off into the winds like a couple of hats stuck downwind of an aggressive fart. And the track filter and shortcut buttons went to the pub instead. You no longer get slip reverse on the direction switch. We'll get over it. One of the best new features in the 2000 Nexus 2 was track filtering. By pressing the filter button under the rotary dial, you could quickly access loads of ways of slicing and dicing your collection and playlist to find your next track. Well, you can say goodbye to that. If you find yourself playing on this CDJ, you're going to have a lot less flexibility in finding tracks on the fly, and you'll have to rely primarily on playlists so you prepare ahead of time. Remember earlier I said to put your most important hot cues in the first three slots? Well, now we find out why. This CDJ only has three. On the Nexus 2 and above, the USB has a little flashing light around it. This shows which USB the CDJ is currently playing from. It stops you accidentally pulling it out whilst bangers are being delivered. This is now gone, meaning you have to be extra careful when removing your USB drive. You also need to be aware of file format compatibility when you're getting this far back. FLAC and ALAC, whatever that is, are no longer supported. One of the biggest adjustments to this particular CDJ is forgetting the screen isn't a touch screen and poking it like an undercooked beef joint. One place this crops up is changing loop length. When you set a loop, the loop lengths will show up on the bottom of the screen like they do on other CDJs. Your first reaction will be to tap on these, which of course doesn't do anything. To satisfy your finger's lust for contact, you need to use the needle search strip. Once you're aware of the differences in CDJs, they can be fairly easy to work around. That is, until now, because the next CDJ will screw you, even if you know in advance exactly how it's going to do it. In late 2009, the CDJ 2000 dropped out of Pioneer's womb. Unfortunately, on the way out, some bits fell off in the birth canal. There are some things in life you just take for granted, like running water, my cat being sick on my foot, and scrolling waveforms. Well, the CDJ 2000 laughs at the concept of scrolling, considering it unnecessary and mildly agitating. Instead, you just get a low fidelity waveform at the bottom of the screen. You can't see the grid, and it makes understanding the track structure a lot more challenging. If you're not using memory cues yet, this is the time to start doing it. On the 2000 in particular, they're really handy to mark track structure. One other weird thing about the 2000 is there's not really a now playing view. For example, on most CDJs, you you kind of open and close the different modes by pressing the button at the top of the screen twice. This lets you focus back on the track you're playing once you've selected it. But on the 2000, those modes stay open all the time. It just means there can be a lot going on at the screen at once and makes it a bit harder to focus. The DJ World runs on Quantize. It helps set grids, accurate cue points, and figures out the BPM of the track. The CDJ2000 only has Quantize down to one beat, so if you like to set hot cues on transients or you do a lot of finger drumming, you might struggle and you'll probably need to disable it. There's no dedicated Quantize button on here, so you have to do it in the utility menu. If you regularly need to turn Quantize on and off, this is going to be a real pain. Speaking of Quantize, there's a button we haven't covered yet called the Loop Cutter. Pressing it does as you'd expect and sets a loop of four beats. Pressing it again will half the loop and so on until you get down to one frame. But I've seen many DJs report this this doesn't play nicely with Quantize, so you need to make sure your timing is damn good if you're going to be using this. A DJ's worst nightmare is the music stopping in the middle of their set. One of the most common ways this can happen is by accidentally pulling out the USB while a track's being played from it. On all the other models we've covered so far, an emergency loop will kick in, buying you some precious time to sort things out. With the CDJ2000, your nightmares can come true. The safety net of the emergency loop is gone, so you just have to practice getting on the mic and telling everyone you're an idiot. To cheers from some and disappointment from others, BeatSync is gone. Luckily now, people on Reddit will think you're a proper DJ until you tell them you're not using vinyl. If there's one thing I love, it's doing 
amateur scratching over a track while it continues playing in the background. So it seems I'm not going to enjoy myself because slip mode isn't invented. The same goes for instant doubles. You now have instant nuffles. Now, of everything we've covered today, this is the number one way CDJs will ruin your life. And it's probably the worst product design decision I've ever seen. The CDJ2000 has free hot cues. Press one and it loads the hot cue, right? Absolutely not, you fool. A fun feature built into the 2000 is you have to manually load each hot cue every single time. To do this, when you load a new track, you press the call button under the hot cues. The hot cues will then turn red. You press the hot cues you want to load in, presumably all of them, and then you press call again to exit the mode. That's five button presses just to get your hot cues loaded every time you play a new track. And if you forget, it will load the last track you set them on without warning. Wonderful. Knowing how different CDJs work is essential for being confident on any DJ setup. But there's an even easier way you can set up CDJs to work exactly how you want. So watch this video next where I show you how to give your CDJ superpowers with just a USB drive.